Congress goes after Jack Smith with the aptly named Your Fired Act. And the partisan Judge Chutkin rules against President Trump on his immunity appeal, opening the president to a deluge of civil cases. Hello, I'm Mike Huckabee with your December 6th edition of The Breakdown. If you get to the end of the video and you find it informative, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel by hitting the subscribe button below. Then be sure to click the notification bell. Three House Republicans went out on a limb Friday and alleged partisan motivations on the part of special counsel Jack Smith. Just kidding. We all know that Smith is dripping with partisan motivation. In a letter to Smith, House Oversight Committee James Comer of Kentucky, House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan of Ohio, and Representative Anna Paulina Luna of Florida said, and I quote, The committee is concerned that your unprecedented investigation and fevered prosecution of President Trump is not about any true commitment to equal justice under the law, but an increasingly contrived attempt to use the criminal justice system to defame the former president before the 2024 election. And yes, it's called the House Oversight Committee in part because it does have oversight of the Justice Department. And that means it has the responsibility to pass legislation pertaining to the agency's actions. Accordingly, their letter called for Smith to turn over documents relating to his criminal prosecution of Donald Trump. As reported in the Epic Times, they demanded that he hand over documents related to, quote, Mr. Smith's authority to grant immunity to witnesses and impanel a grand jury, as well as any communications that could speak to any oversight from the Department of Justice concerning Mr. Smith's decision to indict President Trump, end quote. Now, I assume they're talking about both indictments that Smith is prosecuting, which are the J6 case and the classified documents case. Committee chairs have tried twice before to get similar information, but Smith's office didn't respond either time. Why would they think this letter would be any different? Other House Republicans are trying uselessly to invoke the power of the purse to restrict Smith's funding or his salary, but that's destined to fail as well because Democrats control both the Senate and the White House. Still, somebody must have had some fun coming up with the acronym it's called the You're Fired Act, and it's short for Yanking Outlays for an Unethical, Ruthless Enterprise that Fraudulently Impedes Robust Electoral Debate. Well, that could apply to a lot of governmental activities these days, but it can't pass, and so is really just more of a statement or maybe an example of Congress fiddling with acronyms while Rome burns. It's going to take a lot more than strongly worded letters and bills to stop the unethical, ruthless enterprises such as Jack Smith's rabid prosecution. The bill was introduced by freshman Tennessee Representative Andy Ogles, and it says, quote, The Biden administration's weaponization of the DOJ for personal political gain through the appointment of Jack Smith is nothing short of appalling. In November 2022, he was tasked with taking down Biden's biggest threat, President Donald J. Trump. From falsified indictments to non-existent supporting evidence, everything about the proceedings by Smith have screamed desperate. America cannot and will not stand for that, and it's well past time that Congress uses its power of the purse to tell Jack Smith, you're fired, end quote. In other Trump witch hunt news, did you see on Friday that not only has Judge Tanya Chutkin, the presiding judge in Trump's J6 case, ruled against Trump on his immunity and First Amendment arguments, but also that a three-judge panel of the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia ruled unanimously that civil cases against Donald Trump over damages relating to January 6 may proceed. I'm not kidding. They said he was acting not in his official capacity as president, but in, quote, his personal capacity as a presidential candidate, end quote. As the Supreme Court has ruled in Nixon versus Fitzgerald, a president has absolute immunity from civil liability over actions taken in an official capacity. And of course, that was the argument that Trump's legal team made before these judges. As reported in Newsmax, they assert that the actions detailed in the indictment, including pressing state officials on the administration of elections, cut to the core of Trump's responsibilities as commander-in-chief. As reasonable as that argument seems, the judges turned it away. They offered only that when these cases do go forward, Trump can still try to prove that he was acting officially. Chief Judge Siri Siravanson wrote that the district court largely rejected his claim of immunity, 
that President Trump now appeals. The sole issue before us is whether Trump has demonstrated an entitlement to official act immunity for his actions leading up to and on January 6, as alleged in the complaints. We answer no, at least at this state of the proceedings. End of the quote. Three decades ago, the Supreme Court ruled that Paula Jones' civil lawsuit against President Bill Clinton could proceed, even though he was still in office. Clinton was later impeached on a process crime, lying under oath, that was also in connection with that lawsuit. Their decision was quite controversial at the time, as the prospect was raised of a president being deluged with litigation while in office. Now the nightmare is coming true, only it's with the former president running for re-election, with the prospect of being president when the lawsuits finally reach courtrooms. If Donald Trump is held ultimately responsible for the events of January 6, and his actions are treated the same as those of a private citizen, can you even imagine the endless, crushing deluge of lawfare that will result? At least with Paula Jones, she was suing President Clinton for something she'd alleged he personally did to her. With J6, litigants are trying to hold Donald Trump responsible for everything they claim he indirectly caused. Violence, vandalism, and psychological trauma that was actually caused by some of his so-called supporters. There will be no limit to the lawfare. This is the Democrats' dream come true. By the way, already a lawsuit has been filed by Capitol Police officers James Blassingame and Sidney Hemby, who seek damages for physical and emotional injuries they suffered as a result of the Capitol attack. That's right, they're suing Donald Trump for this. Trump and only Trump. A lawyer for one of the officers said, Today's ruling makes clear that those who endanger our democracy and the lives of those sworn to defend it will be held to account. On the contrary, our democracy is much poorer for this. House Democrats have also filed a couple of suits against Donald Trump. One of them comes from 10 House Democrats, including Representatives Jerry Nadler and Maxine Waters. The other comes courtesy of Representative Eric Swalwell. These judges failed to see that President Trump's actions leading up to and on January 6 were in an official capacity. For example, he was acting in an official capacity when he offered House Speaker Nancy Pelosi thousands of National Guard troops to help keep the peace that day. And she was acting in an official capacity when she refused them. I wonder when we're gonna see the lawsuits against her. Well, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, I hope you'll help us get to a million subscribers by subscribing to the channel below. Be sure to leave a like and share your thoughts in the comments section. Now, we won't have a Live with Mike live stream for you this week, but you can get more of my news analysis and commentary by signing up for my newsletter at MikeHuckabee.com. It's totally free. That'll do it for this edition of The Breakdown. I'm Mike Huckabee.